Jewish apple cake is another one of these desserts that I don't think I've actually ever seen my grandmother make when I was a child. But my memory is pretty bad, so it could have happened. But I'd like to think after making this that I would have remembered such a thing. So let's watch me make it on this week's edition of Grandma's Cookbook. To start with, you're going to need to peel and cut into pretty small pieces four medium apples. Now, comparatively speaking, these three apples were still a little too big for the end product. So I would probably say go with pretty smallish apples if you're using this as a visual guide. Cut those up and put them into a bowl. Down to our bowl of cut up apples, we're going to add one half cup of sugar and one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon. And you're going to toss that together very well and you're going to let it sit aside as the sugar does its magic to suck out a little bit of the moisture from the apple and soften it up a little bit. Now as you let the sugar do its magic to the apples, we're going to mix together the dry ingredients, which consist of three cups of flour, one half teaspoon salt, two cups sugar, four eggs, one third cup orange juice, one cup oil, one teaspoon baking soda, one teaspoon baking powder, and two teaspoons vanilla. Now when I said dry ingredients, I lied because there's a lot of wet ingredients in here too. And we're going to beat that together well. And I might suggest if you were to do this yourself to maybe break this part up a little bit. Um, maybe mix together all the dry ingredients and then add the wet to it. It was a bit of a pain and it can be kind of hard to make sure that all of the clumps of flour were thoroughly beaten, but I eventually got there. And I gotta say at this point, it started to smell a little bit like the batter that we had for the crazy crust apple pie, if you remember that one. Now that we have all of our mixtures together, you're gonna need to get yourself a fluted tube pan. If you don't have a fluted tube pan, I'm sure a tube pan or a tube pan would work just as well. And it says to grease and flour it. I don't know if my technique was bad or if you really need to do both of these things, but I tried. And you're going to, just like we did with the coffee cake, alternate layers. First one being the batter. Then you're going to do a layer of the apple filling, followed by batter, apple, and then batter again. I tried learning from the previous experience that I had uneven layers to do my best to make sure that I didn't have that same issue again. And I think I might have not distributed the layers well enough into this one. Anyway, once we have the cake done, you're going to put it into an oven at 350 degrees for one and one quarter hour. Stab it with a cake tester to make sure it's done. Pull it out and you're going to let it sit for one hour before removing it from the fluted tube pan. And after much nervousness, Hoping this thing didn't tear as I flipped it over. There you go. Jewish apple cake. How's it taste? I think that maybe my method for baking it, because I had it on a sheet pan to make sure if anything oozed out of it that it would catch, that might have actually hindered it a little bit as far as baking it, because it was a little gummy. Maybe if I let it go for maybe another 15. 10, 15 minutes, it might have helped, but I was a little worried about it getting burnt. But there's a base here, and it's not too bad, but it really did remind me of that crazy crust apple pie we did a couple of months ago at this point. Um, it's not a bad cake. There's probably a way better way of making this, or way better technique, I should say, than how I did it. But I would recommend this. Give it a shot. Maybe use different apples. Maybe make your layers a bit better. Or maybe don't use layers at all and just kind of stir it around so there's apple bits everywhere. Either way, thank you all for watching. We'll see you here next week with another Grandma's Cookbook.